reflecting on uh, day one. What feedback uh, did we collect? And uh, this is uh, yeah, my perspective. Uh, I think uh, very important um, feedback and uh, yeah, points we received. Uh, it's, it's not that we uh, didn't know about it, but uh, of course we, uh, we are very grateful for clarity. So the decision about structural health monitoring should be uh, in the design phase and uh, in a wider perspective. It uh, should be also the uh, structural integrity management should be considered uh, in the design phase. And uh, this uh, opens the map to uh, designs uh, which are also relying on uh, monitoring and, uh, and inspections rather than being uh, very conservative. So, first point, uh, I think the uh, decisions uh, should, be in a, should be taken in the design phase. Uh, this is very important. We focus on criticality. Uh, this uh, came also uh, up here. I think this is very important. It is uh, in the design, the criticality of the components, uh, either by design checks uh, or uh, in our structural reliability analysis. Uh, and uh, I think a good example were the two uh, uh, wind park presentations. Uh, one with this was mine, focusing on the only on the operation phase. Uh, but the next step, clearly, is uh, as as Holger presented. Uh, the next step is uh, also to include the uh, design phase here. And uh, we need to have uh, clarity uh, and optimality. Uh, what and when to measure with what uh, technology. And uh, I think here, uh, this uh, state in my mind, uh, we need to address the very uh, basics. And this is the type of uh, the information. And uh, here the example is uh, the visual bridge and the damage um, mechanisms which have been uh, analyzed. And then uh, there's uh, an identification of the uh, sensors which can, uh, which are able to know uh, about these damage scenarios. And I also understood that uh, this has been taken up in uh, in other countries. I, th I think it was Norway, right? Um, that uh, that these uh, damage scenarios have been uh, gone through with uh, with models. And uh, that we identified the sensors that we have the right type of the information. And uh, uh, of course, we would like to, uh, so it's very important to address this. Uh, as this is a prerequisite for our value of information analysis. We need the type, the precision, and the costs uh, to then uh, assign a, a value of this SHM strategy uh, based on these scenarios we are considering in the scenarios. So, and then I think uh, extremely important is um, following the measurements uh, by the designers. Uh, this is for me an extremely important point. It's an open field uh, in research and in engineering, as I understood. What is missing here? Uh, Wait, or what is missing? Um, I also understand that um, yeah, the designers should, should follow the limits, but um, there's a lot of work uh, on interpreting uh, the, the measurements and to, to relate them to the structural models. Uh, this is not straightforward, this is efforts. And it requires, uh, no doubt, it requires a 
excellent structural engineering with uh, structural engineers who not just know their models but know reality. And it requires an excellent uh, SHM engineering. So they should not uh, be like I uh, sometimes observe in projects um, be some uh, unclarity of where the sensor uh, exactly is located. Uh, and um, there needs to be understanding uh, very basic for strain gauge measurements. Uh, this is very, very local uh, measurements. And uh, if you have in the structural design uh, a simplified model, a B model, uh, then you can almost be sure that uh, so lately by mechanics um, you cannot directly relate the strains uh, you are having from the beam model uh, to the strains you are measuring because they are much more local and you need a very local model uh, so it could be a shell, a shell model. Okay, this uh, I think this is a challenge but but uh, we, we are aware, uh, we have identified domains where structural health monitoring can bring benefits. Uh, it is prototyping, uh, or it may be related to prototyping, and the point here is uh, that we would need to show the benefits uh, of doing this. And the benefits of doing this may be uh, that we, uh, we should think in the direction of uh, making a new design, uh, much more sophisticated uh, new design, a cheaper, more efficient uh, design. So this was the point of following the measurements. Um, and they should be followed by the uh, designers, but they uh, are not the only ones um, who should be involved in this process also together with the SHM engineers and uh, maybe also some scientists. And uh, the extremely important point uh, and uh, we have been also taking up for the further development of uh, the field of SHM is that we need our decision scenario, we need the actions and we need um, the triggers for the actions, uh, and then uh, our SHM should facilitate um, to save money, to either delay the actions uh, because they are uh, not necessary, because we know much better the condition. I think the base uh, here are that uh, the clarity in the uh, case studies is required. We have it in. Um, it is the decision rules. So, uh, what is the outcome uh, of our um, SHM strategy, and or what are the outcomes? Uh, there's very different outcomes, and then based, for instance, on uh, thresholds to to trigger actions, and then uh, the task here for the researchers is to do uh, maybe a pre-posterior decision analysis and to go through all of the possible outcomes and then to derive the decision rules uh, which are value of information optimal. <coughs> An example for a value of information optimal decision rule is uh, if you uh, do inspect and you decide about repair. Uh, so you could uh, inspect and then you can record the outcomes. So there's a detection of a crack or no detection of a crack. And then you can uh, think of uh, when to optimally repair the structure depending on the, uh, on the outcome. So uh, in a previous serial analysis we go through all the, all the branches. So even if we have a detection uh, of a crack, we may repair later or we may repair just now. And we have shown, uh, for instance, that uh, value of information optimal is to inspect and just to repair. So in case uh, there is a detection. Right? 
So that's rather intuitive, but it's also um, the value of information optimal. Okay, important point, triggers for actions in a way to save money. Uh, this is basically uh, the value of, uh, of information. This is the main mechanism in our value of uh, information analyzers uh, to create the value of the information. They need to be connected to actions in a way to save money. And then uh, I think at uh, this point here came a little too short. Um, it's SHM systems. We are relying on uh, really uh, on excellent uh, SHM engineering SHM systems. And here the data normalization needs needs to work. So we don't want to find uh, any temperature dependencies or even uh, faults alarms due to uh, whatever. It's uh, temperature is a problem, but I think uh, to quite an extent the data normalization is working. It may be a challenge uh, when we have damage detection um, algorithms, very sensitive algorithms, then the data normalization is uh, or can be, uh, can be an issue. We need uh, the uh, damage quantification and localization. So uh, this could be, wait, this is the field of research first. Second, um, uh, the example, uh, the zero average. Uh, I think this uh, may be a way to, uh, and it's a very efficient way. Um, to come to uh, damage quantification and localization to work with the model with simulations. Um, yes, we have also been, uh, the feedback came on the sensor lifetime. Uh, important points uh, when um, there's records of Sensor technologies like vibrating wire sensors uh, lasting for 30 years, also <coughs> fiber break uh, sensors lasting for 20, 30, uh, I think, or 35 years. Uh, but uh, yes, there's a few examples of uh, such long lifetime of sensors. Uh, but uh, the point is uh, that the SHM systems, uh, all, almost all SHM systems, maybe not 20, but uh, it was 10 or 15 years, um, should, uh, should be available um, in the market uh, for the purpose of uh, supporting the structural territory management. <coughs> and I would like also to add here an innovation perspective uh, actually, I wanted to discuss this uh, yesterday in the uh, in the panel discussion, uh, but for some reasons uh, this was not possible. Um, so when we uh, look at innovations of SHM or looking at uh, how SHM systems are developed, uh, then uh, the uh, developers are going after a uh, after the detection of uh, very small damages uh, with a high confidence. So they are thinking in uh, terms of uh, reliability of their systems. This is often uh, very, very much important and very, uh, it's the right way. And especially in the uh, aviation industry, uh, this is even a requirement for the SHM systems that they can detect very small damages uh, with a high probability and a high confidence. But uh, this is yeah, this is a little too short-sighted. And especially uh, if we look in the uh, context of value of information, uh, I think the, uh, the context we are providing here, uh, this is the perfect ground for innovation because we need to uh, come here from the thinking in reliabilities 
uh, for SHM systems to come to think in value of information. So an efficient SHM system uh, may provide a tremendous uh, value of information. Like the first uh, statement uh, in the presentation yesterday, there are tremendous uh, benefits, uh, but uh, only together with uh, the decision scenario, with the structure, with, uh, and with the actions uh, which should be triggered. So, in this sense, uh, value of information analysis are the ground, the basics uh, for innovation because it opens up not just to think in uh, reliabilities, detection reliabilities, but to think in uh, value of information. And, uh, as, yeah. and there's clear ways just in SHM engineering uh, to just do engineering, not uh, an extensive analysis. Um, to uh, go for a very high value of information. Okay, so that, this was uh, day one, the points of um, decisions of uh, or about SHM should be taken in the design phase, uh, what, when to measure and with what technology is important. Uh, Follow-up of the measurements by the designers, uh, triggers for actions uh, in a way to save money and uh, the SHM system development uh, which we are and availability which we are relying on. And uh, another perspective um, I think we had in the Panel discussion uh, on how how to get how do we get the uh, value of information analysis uh, running, and I'm I think this is three points, also in in the order here, uh, one two three. The first most important point uh, is the communication, documentation, and dissemination of the benefits. So this. Yeah, I think this is simply the most important and uh, this is what we are after with the case studies. And if we can show a uh, very high benefit to uh, yeah, different uh, stakeholders, was it industry, uh, was it society, or better all together, uh, then this can trigger developments including influencing on, uh, influence on standardization. Um, of course, uh, and this is also the action about we should uh, provide material on how to uh, how to implement guidelines, standards, uh, education on the matters. And um, specifically in the codes and standards, and we have uh, we are seeing this in the Euro code standardization. Um, yeah, we need an opening here for uh, such uh, value of information analysis or decision analysis. This is most important and uh, I think a very uh, good example uh, which we heard yesterday was uh, the offshore oil and gas industry and what happened in the late 90s. Uh, the codes and standards opened up and they didn't state the methodology but they simply said that uh, we need to have fixed inspection levels, but they need to be justified. And this uh, basically triggered the uh, developments of the risk-based inspection planning. Okay, from my side for now, uh, let's have a good day too. Thank you.